So take a look here, though. This is all, as we say, assuming that Nikki Haley does not pull off the mother of all political miracles on Tuesday, because right now, here's the Republican race. You see the delegate count Trump by a 10 to 1 margin leading Nikki Haley. And you see what's going to come up Tuesday. Let me call those up. These are all the states and all the results we've had so far. But let's call up the big one. Super Tuesday here. And just take a look at this map. And I think you'll see the challenge Haley faces. Here's all the states. And, you know, you start. It's the map and it's the rules. California, you would think, is a great state for Nikki Haley. Closed primary. Independents can't vote. Democrats can't vote. And it's winner take all. If Trump just gets 50 percent plus one, he gets all 169 delegates out of California. A lot of states that are like that. Alabama is essentially a winner take all. Arkansas is essentially a winner take all here. Texas is at the statewide level, essentially winner take all as well. They also give out votes by congressional district. But if you look at those districts, they really look friendly to Trump. The bottom line for Nikki Haley, when you look at this map, 40 percent is not going to cut it unless she's winning. Winning states, winning multiple states on Tuesday. She's going to get buried in a delegate avalanche, Kristen. She's going to get buried. She's going to literally get annihilated in the next 24 hours. Hey, gang, come on in one and all. We got a little live stream Monday night going on here. I am Dr. Steve, your patriot professor. I mean, what do you say, gang? Did you hear him? He's like, hey, these are closed primaries. No independents. No Democrats can vote. Oh, really? Democrats and independents can't vote for the Republican nominee. Oh, oh, I wonder I wonder who's voting for Nikki Haley. What do you say to this, gang? Seriously, what do you say to this? Sorry, I'm got I'm I've been going like 20. I did three videos today. I did two interviews. I have one that's coming up on the channel that is a 90 minute podcast. I am I am I'm running on fumes here, but I'm doing this. I'm getting through this. What do you say? I mean, could things possibly be better for the Trumpinator right now? I mean, seriously, I think about it. As I was getting ready for this live stream, I was thinking about it. Think about the way this week began. Think about how last week closed, right? We had the Supreme Court announce late last week that they were going to intervene. They were going to listen to Trump's immunity claims, but not until the end of April. And then they didn't even say when they would make the decision, probably sometime in the summer or when they would publish the decision. This effectively takes Jack Smith's J6 case away from him and his weaponized legalism. At the same time, last week, Biden's poll numbers, they reached dissent levels never seen before by an incumbent, made all the worse by the optics disaster at the southern border, right? Late last week, what was that, Thursday, where, where of course, Trump looked freaking awesome at the border, even, even waving at, at illegal wa immigrant wannabes on the other side of the uh, razor wire. Hey, I, and they were like, Trump, Trump. He's like, e even they love me. As contrasted with Biden literally needing help from one of the rangers to walk. And then today, well, I mean, forget, then you had three caucuses on Saturday and Trump won them all in total blowouts. And then today you have a 9-0 decision that was one of the single most epic repudiations of any lower court, any state Supreme Court we have ever seen. I mean, that those four Supreme Court justices in Colorado need to resign. That That's in effect what the Supreme Court said. I mean, we're talking even Jackson said this. Okay, we're talking the liberals of the Sotomayor, Kagan. They were all like, you guys are not, you were not, you rendered a decision that was, that was not a judicial decision. That was a blatant partisan act. Remember, those four justices rendered that decision and immediately stayed the decision saying it can't go into effect until the Supreme Court rules.
They, they actually stayed their own decision. It was one of the single most epic repudiations of any lower court in our nation's history. Those four justices should be run out of those benches. And now all they've ended up doing in the end was not just guaranteeing that Trump will be on every single ballot throughout the nation in November, but they did so in light of the fact that we had just had two massive bombshell polls drop showing Trump crushing Biden by one says six points, the other says five points, and winning in every single battleground state. How does it get better than that? I mean, seriously. Trump crushing Biden by five or six points. That's like Clinton, the way Clinton is crushing Bob Dole in every poll leading up to the election back in 96. I mean, everyone was like, yeah, there's no way the guy is, there's no way Dole pulls this off. I mean, seriously. Remember, Trump never led in a single poll the whole of 2020. The New York Times at this point in 2020 had Biden up by 14 points over Trump. Now Trump is up six. It's a 20 point swing using the same methodology, same weighting system, you name it, via the New York Times. Do you believe... I want you guys to fully appreciate what's happening tonight. Do you believe that, say, a year ago, the Democrats believed that they would be in the position that they are right now at this time in the election on March 4th, 2024? Do you think the Democrats believe that back in, say, March of 2022 or 2023, do you think they would have taken seriously someone saying, yeah, you know, a year from today, the New York Times poll is going to drop and it's going to show that Biden is down six points head to head against Trump with Latino voters across the nation. Trump will be winning Latinos 46 to 40. What do you think they would have said a year ago? (laughs) Yeah, right. Hey, guys, trust the plan. Trump won't even be on the ballot. Trust the plan. You have to understand this is beyond anything, any nightmare scenario that any Democrat could have possibly conceived of. Make no mistake, tonight they are scared to death, and all you have to do is watch MSNBC to prove it. It's election night all over again, 2016. It's election night all over again. It's November 8th, 2016, and they are suffering a collective concussion. They are literally staring into the camera. Ghost face. They, they are, they literally have no idea what to say to their dwindling audience. They've been promising them this whole time, promising them. No way Trump is going to be on all the ballots. No way. No way. Nope. Trump is going to be tried and convicted before November. Guaranteed. Jack Smith's got this. Fannie Willis has got this. And now they're just looking around going, what the heck? We got nothing. And because they've been putting all their eggs in the lawfare basket, in the basket of weaponized legalism, they haven't been out campaigning. They haven't been out convincing, persuading the masses that Joe Biden is their man for November of 2024. But Trump has. Trump's been out there fighting the good fight, holding rallies, doing campaign stops filming commercials, and now he's up five, six, seven points. 
and beating Biden in every single battleground state. Some of them, like in Georgia, like by 10 points. But it's not just the Democrats. It's the Republican establishment as well. The very establishment, the Nikki Haley, the Hillary Haley establishment that originally gave the green light to the Democrats to indict President Trump in the first place. Remember, the only reason why the Democrats are pursuing all of this weaponized legalism, this lawfare, is because the Republicans are allowing them to do it. That's the only reason. The Republican leadership, the establishment leadership, isn't doing jack shit to stop a single Democrat from weaponizing the legal system against President Trump. They're not doing diddly squat about it. And what's about to happen to that establishment and their handpicked candidate, Hillary Haley? What's about to happen tomorrow? Now, you heard it right at the beginning. She is about to get absolutely crushed. Patrick Basham, if you know from the Democracy Institute polling, he's predicting, this just dropped a couple of hours ago, he's predicting based on his analysis of the 15 states that are holding their primaries tomorrow. Patrick Basham is predicting, these are his words, that tomorrow will, quote, could be the most crushing defeat ever suffered on Super Tuesday. That's what we're looking at tomorrow. Based on his analysis, tomorrow could be the single most crushing defeat ever suffered on Super Tuesday. Tomorrow, nearly 40% of the delegates are up for grabs in the 15 different states having primaries, California, Texas being two of the massive, massive delegates. Trump is leading Hillary Haley by an average of about 80% to 20%. He's beating her right now by basically 60 points. Eight in 10 Republicans are prepared to vote for President Trump tomorrow in what looks to be the single biggest open primary thumping in primary history. And it's already started. Like I mentioned, Trump swept the three contests, the caucuses that were on Saturday in Idaho, in Michigan, and Missouri. I bet Hannah was there. We'll check in with Hannah in a second. I bet Hannah was there on Saturday for the Idaho caucus. Swept all three. He's winning North Dakota right now as we speak. North Dakota has their caucus tonight. And then tomorrow, Super Tuesday, it looks like Trump is going to have a clean sweep of all 15 states, winning by an average of around a 60-point margin. Again, look for something akin to that, an 80-20 ratio. Trump is going to win upwards with about 80% of the vote. I mean, this is an absolute crushing, the likes of which we have never seen on a Super Tuesday. Make no mistake, I heard uh, every people yesterday, I know some trust. Nikki Haley just won her first primary. She won Washington, D.C. that votes 5% Republican and 95% Democrat. She won. She won. <laughs> I saw that on Twitter. I saw that. She won. That is as significant as if Nikki Haley won San Francisco. Nikki Haley is a clown. She, I would say she's a joke, but she's not even that funny. Anyone who even remotely, even remotely, like even kind of takes her seriously is him or herself a clown, and a joke as well. In the end, Hillary Haley 
is just there to try to make things harder for Trump in the general election. She is a spoiler candidate, not for the nomination, but for the general election. She is on team Biden. Make no, I mean, make no bones about this. You you have to be as clear as you possibly can. She right now is on team Biden. Her one job is to make it harder for Trump in November. And here's the insult added to injury. She's not even doing that. Trump's polls keep going up in head to head or in the full match with Cornell West and RFK Jr. And like Trump's polls keep going up. She's not even doing that. So we may end up seeing the end of Nikki Haley as of tomorrow. We'll see. If she continues, and she most certainly may, it's simply because the checks have yet to clear in her account. All right. Make no mistake, this is as artificial of a candidacy that you can possibly get. There is no stopping the Trump train. No serious analyst believes there's any stopping this Trump train. And it is now officially bound for November. And he is stronger than he has ever been before. And he is more likely to win the White House than he's ever been in any position up to this point in 2016 or 2020. And both the Democrats and the Republican establishment are scared witless about it. All right, Hannah, you back there. Were you at a caucus yesterday? I on Saturday. Yes. On Saturday, was, Saturday. There you go. That's it. Yeah, it was incredible, Steve. The turnout in Idaho was absolutely amazing. It blew everyone away. We had no idea how many people were going to come, but it was incredible. There were so many people that were passionate and they play a video. Who here has actually been to a caucus? I'd love to know in the chat because I can tell you a bit about what it's like. It's really interesting. It's different than a normal, um, a normal vote. But they have a video playing from all of the candidates and it's on loop. So I had to stand there welcoming people, listening to Nikki Haley give her pitch over and over for hours on end. But I got to hear Trump's as well. And Steve, I kid you not, every time Trump, his video started to play, people started to cheer. Yeah. And you're not supposed to do that, but I they were so it. passionate. And um, of course, he won in a landslide 85 yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the percentage right now i i heard it was over 80 percent in idaho yeah I think it was 85 correct? 85 that's what i yeah i, I did yeah unbelievable yeah. um yeah it was it was wonderful people wow yeah. <laughs> people were there and they, oh, I, they, idaho 85 for yeah 84.3 percent unreal yeah. i mean it just that's just dominance like you, you, and that's coming from MSNBC too. <laughs> I just love going to MSNBC on days like this. I know it. Um, it was just amazing to be a part of, and I honestly started getting teary because they started singing the national anthem. And here we are. We're gonna fix this. We're gonna. We're gonna make. We're some gonna moves. fix exactly. We're gonna fix okay. this. We're gonna. We're gonna make America great again. This is gonna be an incredible four years. Um, I. I just. Just looking at MSNBC's faces today, they don't think they can steal this. They really don't. If they did, they, they wouldn't be worried at all. They'd be like, yeah, again, trust the plan. We're going to be fine in November. Don't worry about it. They're, they are flipping out. They are absolutely flipping out. They're suddenly realizing our plan was to get rid of him. That was our plan. Our plan was to make sure that somebody else, maybe Vivek or whatever, is going to be in uh, on the ballot. He wasn't going to be on that ballot. Now they know he's going to be on the ballot. And they're like, uh-oh, now what? <laughs> well, I would encourage anyone listening here right now, if you've been inclined or thought about volunteering, just go help. They need as many people as possible. You might even be able to show up tomorrow morning if you have an election or a primary in your area and see if you can help. They just need people. And it's really good for our kinds of people to yeah. be involved in those things. So Steve, I know you and I talk about that a bit and we, we had an event before where we dove into those things. We're going to do another one. Yeah. I'm just hinting to you guys. We might do another one. Um, yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah. on 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 federal uh, election integrity and protection mm-hmm. and so forth and getting involved in these wonderful organizations that are doing just that, making sure that our our vote is protected and secured uh, in November. Yeah, it will yeah. be great. Yeah. So maybe I'll share a little bit more with our virtual studio. I see all the Insiders Club members here. Are they all uh, coming on in? Great. <laughs> great to see you guys. Yeah. Anything else we want to share on the YouTube side before we go over there, Dr. Steve? I have a couple things. Yeah. Why don't you? Yeah. Why don't you? Because we do have some really neat things coming up over at here in Trolley Talks that uh, people in YouTube land would like to hear. Well, I'd love to know if anyone here is in the Las Vegas area because Mm -hmm. Dr. Steve is coming your way this week and he'll be at the Replatform Conference as a speaker. And it's a amazing, amazing group. Stevie can speak more to this, but the parallel economy is rising up and they're all getting together. And Steve is going to be a voice for everyone there. So if you're in the area, please sign up and come. I I unfortunately will not be there, but Steve, I know would love to love to meet you. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be there. Um, I'm coming in Friday night. I'll be there all day Saturday and I'm speaking, I think around like three 30 on Saturday. Uh, And I'll be speaking to the rising parallel civilization that's going on all over the world and how our parallel economy is uh, and President Trump uh, are are riding that wave. So I'd love to see if you're in the Las Vegas area. Yes. And if you can't come to that, um, if you are coming on the cruise with us, that's something that we're really looking forward to. So go and uh, I think it's cruise.trolleytalks.com. There might be a link in the description. If you've been thinking about coming on that and you haven't signed up yet, make sure you sign up for that. Absolutely. So. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm very much looking forward to that because we're going to have several days of uh, teachings and um, lectures and Q&A uh, right before just a couple of months before November. So it's going to be really exciting. So exciting. Well, um, I guess the other thing is um, insiders members. We did, um, it was, you guys like monetization updates. So Steve, I was going to give them a quick update on what's going on with that. Yeah. We're under review. Yeah. So just be praying that we are able to um, be in the good graces of big tech. I don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah. To oh my. Yeah. <laughs> um, so crazy. Yes. Yeah, so that's why there's no super chats here tonight. And that's why we have our insiders club our insiders members are absolutely amazing so that's why we do this whole show for them after this so if you want to come join us over there at least please everyone i stress this every week i'm going to stress it again right now put your name and your email in at the link in the description that is how we can stay in touch with you if anything happens going into this year who knows what could happen that's for sure Please, please put your contact info in. If you appreciate the things that Dr. Steve has to say, that is really, really helpful. So um, put your name and your email in, and then it'll give you the opportunity and the invitation to come join us here in the virtual studio. So please do that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So with that, we are going to go into our boycott and boycott updates over here in the virtual studio. If you don't know, that is where we talk about all the crazy woke stuff you don't want to be a part of and all the crazy, amazing conservative stuff you do want to support um every week so we've got some fun ones tonight awesome yep click on that link below join our insiders club and then we'll see you in literally one minute (laughs) on the insiders uh virtual studio all right well thank you youtube come on over here and we'll see you here in a bit okay